voice memo because I have my AirPods in and I think you'll be able to hear me better that way. Voice memo has begun. I wanted to take you along with me as I painted today. Oh my gosh. We just started and it's already gonna be an issue. This week, the election in the United States happened and the race was between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump and Donald Trump won again and I wanted to talk about it because I think that it's something that should be talked about. It was a very sad day. I voted for Kamala Harris of course and I wanted to <clears throat> primarily talk about it while I paint my feelings because I want anyone who's watching this to know, any woman who's watching this to know that I will always stand with you and fight for you. And I think a lot of people don't quite understand why these election results are so upsetting. And so I wanted to share my perspective as a queer woman and I do recognize that as a white woman living in New York I have a lot of privilege that other women don't have and with that privilege I wanted to use my voice because there's women who can't use their voices uh, due to positions they're in or states that they are in so if one thing I can do is use my voice, that's something that I want to do. I was really looking forward to seeing a woman in office because it's just not something the United States has seen before. Obviously, Harris was the first female vice president of the United States, and she was a very qualified candidate. And I think the most disheartening piece was just the reminder of how hated women are in this country especially black women. Um, Kamala Harris is a black woman and South Asian woman. I think representation is so important and having her in office would have empowered so many women. And so it's very disappointing to see how many men and women voted against her. More white women than not voted for Donald Trump over Kamala Harris, which is insane because Donald Trump has sexually assaulted so many women. He's a convicted felon. And I just can't believe that so many other women were able to look past all of the horrible things he's done just for the sake of, what, a better economy? Allegedly, that's not even going to happen. He's providing tax cuts to the wealthy, not to people who are making normal salaries so that's simply not true but at the end of the day it does come down to misogyny and sexism and that's so difficult for those of you who don't know much about politics when donald trump was president last time between 2016 and 2020 he nominated three justices to the supreme court and he all three justices were very conservative justices and in their worldview, very conservative, and because of those three justices he nominated, the Supreme Court was able to overturn Roe v. Wade in 2022. So even though that, that happened while Biden was president, it was because of the actions that Donald Trump did as president. And for those of you who don't know, Roe v. Wade is the lawsuit that protected abortion for women. And since Roe v. Wade was overturned, millions of women have been unable to get proper medical care. And because at the end of the day, abortion is healthcare. And it is so much more than women not wanting to be pregnant. It is the solution for miscarriages. A lot of the time, it's a solution for women who are dying and at risk. And the thing that's killing them is their baby. And the solution to save the woman is an abortion. Um, and so 
He already nominated three Supreme Court justices, and there are currently two Supreme Court justices who um, I think will step down as soon as Trump gets back in office so that, that he can replace them with younger conservative people because they are old, and so if they retire, then he can replace them with younger people, meaning that the court will stay conservative for our entire lifetime because the Supreme Court justice seat is a lifetime position. It's not an elected position that happens regularly. And it's not even something the Americans have a say in. We don't get to vote on Supreme Court justices. The idea behind that is that they're not supposed to be political. However, that has changed clearly. Um, and so one of the items that this court wants to review is Obergefell. What Obergefell is another lawsuit, and that is what granted the right to gay marriage being legal federally. Obviously, as a queer woman, that means a lot to me, and the right to marry is very important. I, again, recognize the privilege I have of being in New York, <laughs> where both gay marriage and abortion are legal in the Constitution. So it's not about me. I don't, I'm not concerned. I'm already married. I have my marriage license. We're federally, it's fine. I'm okay. I just do have empathy, you know, for other people. And I think everyone deserves the right to marry who they want to marry. Another thing they want to review is biracial marriage. So marriage outside of your race, which is literally crazy that, and I don't think people understand that that's something that the court wants to look at. Like, are you kidding? That seems, why is the government controlling who we love and who we marry? It's not fair and it's really disheartening. Um, and I think a lot of people are uneducated when they decide to vote for Trump for economic reasons because like you're saying so e even if it is true even if it even if Trump were to lower the price of groceries and gas let's just let's just stick with that assumption for a second why is that more important than the rights of women and the rights of queer people and the rights of in anyone interracial people to get married why are grocery prices more important than civil rights than human rights um, so I think it's just very disheartening as someone in this country to see that he you know over half the country feels this way he won the popular vote. That was the first time a Republican won the popular vote in 20 years. In 2016, when he ran against Hillary Clinton, Hillary won the popular vote and Trump only won the electoral vote, which is ultimately has the loudest say. But I just can't, it's crazy to fathom as a woman living here and it's really sad. So I've been um, using art to control my feelings lately and to express them, I should say. And so I wanted to document that today as well as show you that if you are a woman watching this, I will use my privilege to stand up for you. I will always vote for you. And I'm always on, going to be on your side um, to help keep our rights. I don't know what that's going to look like right now, and I don't know what will happen in years to come, but I think it's important to talk about, and I think I see a lot of people posting on the internet not talking about it, and so if even just one person watches this and feels like I've created a safe space for them. That's all I could ask for. And so to women everywhere, especially women in America, just know I love you and I support you and I will never stop. I will always fight for you. I'll use my voice when you can't. And if you are in the position where you can also use your voice, 
please do so for those who can't and yeah I'm working on a painting right now okay, obviously I messed up on this one's face I'll fix it later with pen but this is what I came up with okay I'm walking back to my apartment now also when I was walking to this park I was walking on the street and there was this man and I like made eye contact with him which is my number one issue like that's my first mistake because you should never make eye contact with men on the street pro tip uh, and then of course he was like hey pretty young thing and I just ignored him because why would I engage and then I went and sat at the park bench I was just at and there was another man with his dog sitting on one of the benches there thank god because then like 30 seconds after I sat down the creepy man followed me into the park and was like starting to make comments again and he saw that there was another man there with his dog and he immediately stopped and left and I think that basically sums up what it feels like to be a woman in the world right now um where men just feel like they can do whatever and say whatever they want to because that's what the world is telling them that they can do. That's what Donald Trump is telling them that they can do. And luckily that man and his dog were there so I felt safe and then I, he stayed for a long time while I was painting so I felt safe enough to stay. And then even once he left, luckily that man didn't come back. But that is just what it's like to be a woman and you have to be aware of where you are at all times because men will be men.